And that's it, man. Another Monday night, another uh, exciting edition of the Kingpin and 13 show brought to you by uh, WrestleOutLive.com. Uh, I missed yeah, it. Yeah, Monday Night Raw sucked ass, dude. <laughs> how do you how do you have so much extra time and it still sucks? <clears throat> yeah, especially when it's commercial free. Yeah, well, commercial free, yeah. <laughs> Except for all the product placement that was going on on that thing. Yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. Oh, yeah, we're going to be rolling down the street tonight eating uh, Kentucky Grilled Chicken King, yeah. Commercial I'm free. Kobe King. As far as Kofi Kingston didn't come out with a bucket of chicken. <laughs> nah, that's probably why they, they put it in front of the uh, the two white boy announcers that they got in the front. Probably. Yeah, no. yeah they, that was funny. They, that, that was the only reason they uh two two white boy announcers and uh, all the white wrestlers, but no, no black wrestlers. Well, you, dude, you know that because <laughs> if they did that, there would have been, some, you know, some retaliation going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they ain't no better. How weak was that, though, dude? One week, dude's on the show for an hour, and then I guess bought that. Like, what was the point of that? I mean, I guess to garner, you know, a little bit of attention, but I mean, it even looked like uh, they were screwing themselves, considering I heard some rumblings about a uh, an investigation from the. Uh, you know, the, the trade commission. Oh, yeah. It, it was, I don't know, dude. It, it was just not a good show. No, no, not at all. I get what, you know, why they're setting it up like that, but, you know, somebody was talking about it the other day, and I don't remember who, but it's about, you know, how they're trying to drive people, like, the, uh, the older fans away from Raw, and it really does seem that way. I mean, this is retarded anymore. I can't even watch it without, you know, just cringing. I, I want to put the other stuff, but I know eventually we have to talk about it on the show. Because if I didn't have to watch it, I probably would have turned it right, you know, tonight. Yeah. Oh, although, thank God they got rid of uh, Santina Morella. Oh, yeah? Oh, you didn't man. like it? Santino do his thing, dude. I'm kidding? Oh, well, that, but that's only the Raw was pretty... Uh... I don't know, I'm corny. No, I'm looking forward to SmackDown. SmackDown's got a, uh, uh, what looks to be a tag team case match, but who knows, man, it might just end up going, you know, four corners or something. Uh, who won the tag team titles? Huh? I, I missed that. I was uh, doing something else. Oh, not shit happened. You know, they're going to the uh, uh, the pay-per-view this Sunday coming up. It's going to be uh, Carlito and Primo and uh, the Legacy or whatnot, but... Uh, Tonight the legacy came out on top, so you know who knows, man. I could see them putting uh, the belts on them. Oh well, yeah, they put the belts on them with Randy Orton as a champ. You know, makes the tag team stronger. Absolutely. Well, hey, uh, we got a special guest coming on, and uh, that's going to be uh, a big part of your big weekend because this guy's going to be coming after you for blood. <laughs> but uh, you. Uh, and unfortunately, too, for you, you got to go to some kind of wedding or some shit, and then you got to go do a show, right? Yeah, you know, Kingpin got to keep busy, you know, and get my friends out there. You know, it's going to be a busy weekend. I got to attend a wedding, and then after that, whoop some ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> unfortunately for you, you're facing this guy. Uh, his name is Ack Rotten. Yo. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> so. Hey, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, it's a pleasure to be here, man. It's like, uh, you know, it's, it's an honor to, uh, you know, actually come on the air and uh, to speak to all the people and all the fans, and, and more, more importantly, to get back in touch with uh, the kingpin himself, who I haven't actually spoke with in a long time. Uh, the <laughs> other day, we we actually put some words together on the phone, and uh, this weekend it's gonna feel like old times once again when we step right back in there in South Philadelphia, the corner of Swanter and Rittner where the blood flows deep, the beer's warm, and the girls are easy. I can't wait. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> man. Fat rats for everybody. <laughs> uh, man, you know, guys, i got to tell you, um, you know, uh, it's funny because uh, Angel and I were, were kind of talking, and I said, you know, there's, there's, there's several ways you can play this. We could come on here and start saying, I'm going to beat you up, you're going to beat me up, or we could just keep it real and say, you know, we're doing this thing because, 
you know, I'm doing it because I love wrestling. I love wrestling in Philadelphia. You know, my career and my, my history of, of who I am is based in that bingo hall. People mm-hmm. talk about things that I've done 15 years ago to this day. And and to come back there uh, this weekend on Saturday night um, to be able to team up with balls and step into the ring with, uh, you know, Angel and DeVito, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, it, it's a no-brainer to me to understand that what this is all about. This is giving back to the people that for so many years gave to us and gave to me uh, the honor of, of being there. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you know, it was, it, was, it was a privilege to step out there in front of those fans. And a lot of people need to understand that I go back to when this was still called Eastern Championship Wrestling, when there were 50 people in the building. When there was 70 people, we had to tell them all, hey, can you all go to one side so it looks like we have people in the building, please? <laughs> I, went, I, went, I went from those days to the days when there were people lined up around the corner, you know, just to get in to see the same thing. And it's like, you know, we, I have a little bit of pride in help knowing that I helped build that phenomenon and to be able to come back, you know, and do it again with uh, three guys that, uh, you know, I respect their work, I respect them as men, I respect them as workers, um, and I know that when when we go out there on Saturday night, we're going to leave it all out there. Every, every, mm-hmm. They're going to get what they're used to seeing, and I'm not going to tell you what that is, because if you know a match that involves Axel Rodden, Balls Mahoney, Angel, DeVito, <laughs> you know what it involves. <laughs> you know what it is. We've been doing it for so long, guys. You know, I don't have to sell you on this. If you need to be sold on this card, you're not a wrestling fan. I don't yeah, care who you are. I mean, re, I mean, you, look, the matches list like a who's who of superstars of ECW, and and then some. I mean, if I have to, if you can read this card on paper and say, eh, uh, I can, I don't, I don't want to go. You don't deserve to call yourself a wrestling fan. This is absolutely, without a doubt, one of the best shows this year, if not of all time, and it's going to probably, without question, surpass all the hype. I think, without a doubt, once all the boys get back there. And we're all together again, and everyone, the blood starts flowing, you know, maybe a few other things start flowing, a little bit of this, and then there's going to be that sense of one-upmanship again, like, hey, i got to do better than them, i got to do better than them, because that's how it used to be. You remember, Angel, you sit back there, you watch the opening match, and you go, shit, how do I top that? And then we go, well, maybe we could try this. Oh, man, you ain't jumping off the balcony on me, and Ball's like, oh, you doing it on to me? You know, and then, and then the next thing you know, you know, we got uh, Angel uh, Staple with the new with New Jack with the Staple. You know, oh, how are we going to top that? I know, I know. One time in Atlanta, I think you guys put it on the clip of the video. I took a saw blade to Devito's head. People are like, just they were just chanting, "You, know, you sick!" Uh, can I can I say the f word? Oh, you oh, you whatever, whatever you want. You, want. <laughs> you, you, sick, you sick fucks! You know, I mean that that's how cool it was. The people were in tune, and I'm just really excited about it, guys. But enough of my babbling. So you guys go on and talk a little bit, and I'll shut up. <laughs> now, you know, I really appreciate it to come on the show, you know, the Kingpin and Mark 13, even though he don't matter. The point is, that, you know, we appreciate you coming on the show, you know, keeping it real with the fans, you know, uh, you know, me, me, you, you and Balls and uh, DeVito and I, we have history, but like you said, we're going to keep it in the ring and then at, at the end, we're just going to shake hands and move on. Yeah, it's one of those things where I think it would almost be an insult to the fans to, to come on here and start saying, brother, let me tell you, when I get you in the ring in Philly on Saturday night, I would, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Everyone right. that's listening to this show knows what they're coming to see. Everyone knows if, if, if they're coming to this show in South Philly, you know, they know what the history of, you know, the legacy that we built that has been since tarnished and destroyed by the people in Connecticut. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> ECW is nothing more than a television show by nature at this point. There's nothing left of any tradition. And, no. But, you know, but Angel, I mean, like, you when, know. And I did want to ask you about that with uh, with Tommy Dreamer winning the title and uh, everything that went along with that is threatening to leave and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, is it surprising to you that it came to that, that he had to actually lay that down, that either I'm going to leave or you're going to give me the belt? Uh, surprising? Not in the least. Um, you know, the the thing is about – you know the, the the people in uh, WWE. Um, you know they, I think that you know when, when it comes right down to it, Vince McMahon is the boss, and mm-hmm. what Vince wants, that's what it's going to be. And I don't think 
you know, for, for, for all intents and purposes, I don't think that's particularly a bad thing, but I think it is sometimes a, a thing where um, if you let tradition continue to go and grow and manifest, who knows what beautiful things will grow from it. But when you just take that and make it what you want it to be just simply because your ego will not allow you to, mm. let, to, to let someone else's creativity flourish, it's kind of sad. Um, mm. And I'm not saying that's what happened. All I'm saying is um, the fact remains that ECW, um, if it, it could have been brought back the way that, you know, everyone would have liked, it, it, it first of all couldn't have continued that way because um, we would all have been dead um, and uh, it would have been far too gory for any of the other companies to um, live up to. So we would have had to cut it back. Well, you don't have to cut it back to the point of having a guy dressing up like a zombie and getting caned or, you know, having <laughs> having having Balls Mahoney hosting card games. And, you know, that's just, you know, the, 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 the ridiculousness that is sports entertainment befuddles me sometimes because I've been, mm -hmm. in my 21 years in this business, I never thought about being a sports entertainer. I always wanted to be a pro wrestler. You know, I mean, I love entertaining the fans. And if you've ever seen me wrestle, I'll entertain the shit out of you, and I'll, I'll take an ass whooping, I'll give an ass whooping. But I'm, I'm not out there to give you physicality and understand why, you know, you were a little stiff on me. And it, it, the whole thing that separates me, I think, from that, the mentality of the WWE slash ECW is um, seeing that product and what it has become is just knowing that it, it – it has become what Vince wants. He wants you to forget all that we built. He wants yeah. you to, to remember ECW for the New Heart Foundation and, um, uh, oh, geez, I can't even name any of those guys. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, and this is a shoot. I just can't. That's The only reason I can remember the New Heart Foundation guys is because I think I saw uh, them and the volume was down, so I guess that's what they call them. I don't know. But they did their move that did. Uh, Jim and um, Brett did. Uh, yeah. So they yeah, must they be yeah. the Heart Foundation. So, um, unfortunately, you know, Tommy as the champion to me really means nothing unless he wrestles me or Angel or Balls or New Jack or Sabu. Mm -hmm. Then he's wrestling for the ECW title. Christian, I have nothing against him. He's a tremendous talent. Jack Swagger is very talented, too. I like Jack Swagger. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but it's just that these guys, when you say, when you look at the lineage of the ECW title and it says, uh, you know, Don Morocco, Jimmy Snuka, Terry Funk, like Tommy Cairo, Sandman, uh, uh, Raven, uh, mm -hmm. Shane Douglas, Monkey Whipwreck, uh, you know, uh, Tom, Mark, Mark, Mark who? Mark Henry? <laughs> what was it, a joke? Did somebody, ah, you got me, my mouth was open, you know, you, this is the fart game, Eddie Murphy played it, you know, you caught me, my mouth was open. I had someone put Mark Henry in there on me. And every time my brother gets sick, you throw Mark Henry in there on you, and then the next thing you know. But come on, I mean, you know, the, the true fans know what they want to see, and Angel yeah. knows that, uh, you know, being the kingpin that he is, he knows what to do Saturday night. Being a hardcore chair swinging freak that I am, I know what I'm going to do Saturday night. And I guess, and I know that, the, hey, if any of those guys that are on the show plan on phoning it in, plan on being lazy, hey, that's great. That makes it all the more easier for us to steal the entire fucking show. Because I'm not laying down. I'm not, ta you know, I'm coming in there ready to go. You know what I mean? So I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's exactly what the fans are expecting. They're expecting, I mean, you know, the best of the best. That's what always has come out of that building when you guys were there. Now, you had said that, um, you know, you had went into Eastern Championship Wrestling. Uh, very, I mean, that was, what, 94, 93? 93, 94, yeah. It was, it was, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, and then remained there almost until the end of the millennium, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah. You do have some great matches there. What do you think um, would be your most memorable match from there, if you can even pick one? Well, I think it was a Tattoo Death match. Yes, yeah, Angel, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think just simply, there was two. There was the first barbed wire baseball bat match and the, and the Taipei death match. But it seemed for some reason, even the barbed wire baseball bat match, uh, the Taipei death match has surpassed it in, in, as far as in lore and history and wow, you really got to see this kind of thing. 
Um, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's funny because both of those matches, you know, there wasn't really like a blueprint on a how to do kind of thing. You know, it wasn't like uh, you go, well, you know, everyone knows you, they've been doing cage matches since the 50s. Here's how you do a cage match. You know, you don't you don't wrap a baseball bat in barbed wire and go, well, how do you do that? What do you do? <laughs> well, I, I watched the ones from Japan, and what they did was bore the shit out of me because no one would take a hit. No one would do anything. They would just go and grab the bat and go, and the fans would go, ooh, and then they'd kick them and they'd drop it. You know, they mm-hmm. grab the bat, and then they rub it on each other's arm, you know, like they were, like, painting the fence, like Miyagi, paint the fence, paint the fence. <laughs> I was like, man, this is freaking boring. So Ian's like, Ian's like, Ian says to me, and, and, and he deserves all the credit, he goes, let's just fucking swing it. I said, okay. Yeah, what well, well, I mean, I mean, that... your mind when he says that? I said, I said, okay. I said, and, and, and if you watch the match, that sick bastard, um, uh, and this was so this wasn't even a called spot. I got the bat in my hand. He goes, take it to my head, and I swung it at his head, full force. I mean, he blocked it a little bit, but he took it right to the head. Um, and and but but that and, and then after the match, this is what I this is when you know you did something that's really different. When a guy like Terry Funk walks up to you and goes, I don't know what the goddamn hell that just was, but whatever the fuck it was, I ain't doing it. You know, and that, you know, and, and, and yeah, Sabu. The wars that guy was in, yeah. And, yeah, and, 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 and Sabu goes, and Sabu's like, Jesus Christ, the fuck, you don't swing it. What are you guys, nuts? <laughs> well, well, I guess we are, you know, and then, and then, like Angel said, the, uh, the Taipei death match was another thing, and that that was like, well, geez, I don't know really what else we can do. And, and Ian says, well, I got an idea. Oh, I'm boy. like, all right, what do, you want, what do you want to do this time? Because we had already done, you know, I, I shaved his head, we did a strap match, we did, yeah. uh, you know, you name it. And then he says, well, let's just, you know, do this thing like, uh, I guess it was from the Bloodsport movie, I think, was Jean-Claude Van Damme, or one of those movies where they, kickboxing. they were kickboxing or one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, and he goes, we'll just take some broken glass. And this is how casually he says it. What we'll do is we'll wrap our hands, we'll take some, you know, glue, and then we'll, like, dip our hands in this broken glass that we have in this bucket, and then we'll just beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> and I, I, I said to him, I said, yeah. I said, fuck yeah. I said, I mean, I mean that's never been done. I said, I mean, never, ever, ever, ever been done. And no, that's why, maybe. you know, and that's why to this day, like Angel says, I said, you know, that match is probably that, you know, you've done something and actually made history when in 2009, people still go to YouTube and hit a match that's from 1995, and every day more people are watching it. Every day I, people ask me about it. I mean, oh, yeah. that was 14 years ago. I mean, let's, let's yeah, put this in perspective. I mean, you guys. The glass you guys used, I mean, that was, that was all real. You guys really, I mean, they, you yeah. went in there and did it up. Oh, it yeah, was sugar well, glass, motherfucker. Yeah, but right, Angel, well, the thing is, it's it's funny, guys, because, you know, if you watch the match, I walk right down to the ring and put my fist right up to the people, let them hold it, let them touch it, let them see it, and they're like, you know, because, let's face it, we drank a lot of beers to break all those <laughs> bottles to get that glass. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, just to answer the question directly, without without a doubt, not 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 to forsake any of the things that we've done with the Dudleys, with New Jack, with uh, with, with Angel Devito and and Vito and News and, and the the things that that I've done. I've had a great singles matches with Shane Douglas and Chris Candido. God love him. I miss him every day. Um, but you know, I think the the one match that people really remember and that sticks out is the Taipei Death Match. I think that's the one that. Uh, you know, in my mind, if, if, if there's going to be a stamp on what, you know, really turned the, the page for the violence in ECW, that was it. Yeah. Now, mind you, uh, you know, again, guys, you know, people that really – see, they have kind of a skewed history of ECW because they believe what they've been told. Um, the reality of it is, you know, if you think about it, Axel and Ian Rotten, the first barbed wire baseball rap match in the United States, the first one in the ECW arena, we were the first guys to do broken glass in Philadelphia in the ECW arena. We were the first guys to use thumbtacks in that match. That was the first time it had ever been done in ECW. And yet other people have the balls to call themselves hardcore icons, innovators of violence, hardcore this, kings of this. And I'm thinking to myself, 
You didn't do anything except ask us to tone it down because you didn't want to follow us. And that, that's wow. that's a shoot. Wow. Well, um, hey, uh, maybe you guys shouldn't do. I said, no, maybe you guys should fucking work. And that's how it went. So that's my credo. And and again, it's, it's this Saturday. I can't wait to get in there and and do it again. You know. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Francine, and I was telling her before she made the decision of putting us the balls and Axel versus the Baldies. You know, I really was looking forward for New Jack to come onto the show because we originally I wanted the idea of uh, New Jack on a pole match. So send New Jack up the air. Balls and Axel versus the Baldies. The first person to reach New Jack to release them, the other team gets their ass kicked by New Jack. But yeah, that's out. a good idea. You know, and I just and I just I just actually tried to get a uh, I busted a shout out to Jack today because after you and I talked, I was like, you know, there would be nothing better than in the middle of the match. You know, if we just heard the Oh, I mean, we'd all have a good time. You know what it's going to be, and the fans would love it too. I, I, you know, it still might happen. You never know because the one thing about shows at the the arena there in Philly, expect the unexpected. Just because it's not advertised doesn't mean it's not going to happen. So I'm not saying I know anything more than you do, but the one thing I do know is when you come to a show with a. Uh, a, a crew full of ECW guys expect the unexpected, so you never know what you're going to get. It's like it's like a gump match. It's not a box of chocolates. It's an ECW show. You know, it's like that's, it's, it's a it's a great time. Yeah, and I think everybody's expected. I mean, if that was always the uh, the credo, ECW, you go and see them, uh, whether it was uh, Philly, um, out in New York, uh, Cleveland, wherever, uh, where I've seen a lot of ECW shows. And even for house shows, uh, non things, whatever else, and it was, you know, shit was always going down. You were never disappointed walking out of the show. No, well, the thing is, um, one thing about ECW, when 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 and when we were at our our our, our zenith, you know, between like you know, ninety five and ninety eight, and when things were just getting huge, you you didn't you didn't even have to announce the matches. It just said. You know, ECW coming to date. You know, coming to date and coming. To, it would sell out. It didn't, yeah. you didn't even. It didn't. We weren't selling you Hulk Hogan versus Vader, brother, or what you gonna, you know, or oh yeah, free kill them coming to Cleveland, yeah. <laughs> you know, we weren't doing none of that stuff. All we were doing is saying ECW's coming to town and tickets are selling like you know hot, you know, this proverbial hotcakes, if you will, because we didn't have to hype it. Because yeah. it sold itself. We we didn't have to tell you why you needed to come. All you had to do was watch it, and you were there. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I even recall seeing one of the programs say, uh, just appearing tonight, it didn't even have one match listed. Yeah, and, and, and that and that is a true, true uh, triumph to all the guys that, that shed blood and broke bones and had checks bounced to them and um, – you know, didn't get their trans paid for, and all the, the all the little things that 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 should be a little bit of solace in knowing that what you did and what I did um, actually mattered to the fans because they didn't care what the matches were as long as they knew they were getting ECW. And now, unfortunately, you know, the, those fans are are the only ones that know that are those fans because when you tell a kid now who's ten years old. You watch ECW? Oh yeah, I love Hornswoggle. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just <laughs> I, I love Hornswoggle. Like, yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I, I love I love me a Hornswoggle just like the next guy. I like some tomfoolery and I like some chicanery, but I don't know about all this, you know, craziness that they're doing. But um, like I said, we're we're going to do it again this weekend. And um, I, I like I said, if I'm not mistaken, like I, I talked to Francine today for a little while. And we're going to do, like, a little meet and greet with the fans early in the day, which should be cool. Um, I think it starts at maybe 1 o'clock or 12. I'm not really sure. I mean, um, and then the the show itself, I think the doors reopen, like, 6, 6.30. So for, for like, you know, the people with the uh, gold circle tickets or whatever, come in and uh, the meet and greet with the fans and all the, all the wrestlers will be there. So that's kind of cool. So if you're coming yeah. and, you know, you got you got a little bit of extra cash and God knows in this day and age not a lot of people do but uh you know if you if you got to spend your entertainment dollar and do it wisely i think this is a place you can do it because uh you know just by looking at the matches you know on paper it, it it's actually if 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 there were a wrestlemania for ecw barring a few people whose names that i don't see this would be it you know this would you know if we could have the dudleys and we could have jack and we could have 
uh, maybe Rob Van Dam and, and and a couple other guys, Mikey. You know, it would it would be, you know, it would be like WrestleMania. You know, it would be a huge show, and uh, it, it's definitely worth every bit of money that 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 is being put in it. Not to mention where the money's going. We haven't even touched on that for the charity. Um, right. For, for, yeah. So you know, it's 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 a great great event. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of people, you know, like I spoke to Devon, you know, he wanted to be there, but of course, you know, contractual obligations with um, TNA couldn't make it, but he wants, he wanted to be there, you know, because it, it, it's a big show, you know, and uh, a lot of these guys like Rob Van Dam, you know, he's, you know, he's busy, he probably has other situations, you know, other things he has to do and stuff like that, but um, I mean, all those yeah, guys want to be there. Not. Yeah, well, you know, it's just, it, it, it's one of those deals where, um, you know, when, when people uh, are, are, you know, something is put in front of you and you have to make a decision whether you're going to do it or what your commitments are, you know, you, you can't really get every, as much as we'd like, you know, when, when ECW was, you know, its own company, um, you know, we didn't have to worry about whether, you know, Sabu had a date somewhere else, well, except once in 90. <laughs> yeah. Or with the, but with, with the fuck Sabu scenario. Um, yeah. And uh, which, which you know that that we you know how that all ended up. Um, right. But um, he, he was back, and um, you know, but but you know, it's it, it's not a company anymore. So it's like you know, to for for Francine to you know get together, and, and Angel and I spoke about this, and you know, call she calls me and says, hey, can you get a hold of this guy, or can you help me with this, or ask him, do you, do you have a number or an email? That's how this thing really happened. I mean, it was a groundswell of. You know, hey, you know, a couple people trying to to do something good, and then one person called another person, and then they called, uh, you know, and that's how this thing worked out. You know, yeah. a lot of people it's need to really, great costume. yeah, a lot of people really need to check their ego. I think on this one, um, I think, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, the the money's going uh, somewhere that, uh, you know, uh, for to, for cancer and uh, to to help those, you know, with uh, I believe the American Cancer Society. I'm not sure. I don't want to say that Absolutely. out of turn. American Cancer Society, that's who it's going to. And, and I, without question, will support that 100% because uh, my grandmother passed away from lung cancer, and she raised me from the age of 10. And if there's ever a charity that I will donate anything I have, that's it. I have no question in my mind that when she told me that's what it was for, I was I was all in. You know, it, 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 t- it took me less than a second to even say yes, of course. You know, it's something I believe in. And, uh, you know, um, some people don't, I think they still think, you know, it's all about me. It's all, you know, it's, it's not, you know, this is not about us. This is not about ego. This is about the fans and raising some money to help people that need help, you know, and, and, and God knows, you know, that, that, that not, not everyone out there is a billionaire, you know, and, and, and the, the, the money, you know, we, we could all, every one of us on the show could, could God knows, use a payday. Everyone, need, we're working. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's how we make our money. But you right. put your well, pride aside, you know, and you help out, you help out somebody, and you're giving back, you know, and, and that's not a bad thing to help people once in a while. You know, if, if, more, if more people helped more people, this fucking world would be a better place. Yeah, true. Uh, absolutely. I that's, don't coming from a guy, that's coming from a guy whose last name is Rotten. Imagine if my last name was like with sunshine, how great the world would be. I mean, Jesus. This is... Yeah, I'll be honest, man. I don't need no money, you know, because right now I'm cashing in all the old, uh, old ECW profit sharing margin money that I made from uh, back in the day. So I'm living oh, pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's where all the DVD and the pay-per-view royalties are going right to Angel because no one else has ever seen them. Absolutely. <laughs> he rolled the bump. <laughs> oh my God. I'll tell you, well, there's some stories. There's some stories from back then about like, I will have a pay-per-view bonus check FedEx to your house. I promise on my mother. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, and like I'm sitting there waiting for FedEx, and I got fuck X. Nothing came. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> like it was ridiculous. But you know, those is the, the thing is about those days. Uh, especially, especially in the beginning, um, you know, we were doing that stuff out of just a love for the business and trying to, to to really spark a revolution, which we did. And, and if 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 given the actual um, props that it, those guys, you know, we all of us did, uh, we 
changed the face of professional wrestling in the mid-90s. I mean, those guys who are sitting down in Atlanta and those guys sitting up in Connecticut were scared shitless about a little rinky-dink bingo hall full of drunks and quote-unquote drug addicts and no talents, and, and yet we were what everyone in the wrestling business was talking about. They weren't talking about Stone. Oh, Stone Cold couldn't sell a T-shirt because they wanted a yeah, a Sandman T-shirt. That's how it was working out. And they was like, "Why? What's going on? You know, who is a Sabu? What the fuck is a Taz? You know, yeah. why, 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 why isn't it Vader time anymore? Because no one cared. You know, mm-hmm. the, the wrestling fans checked out on Hulk Hogan, the Macho Man, the cutting and strutting of the beefcakes and the." All this stuff, nobody cared because all of a sudden they saw, wow, these guys are fighting and kicking each other's ass, and they act, they yeah. look like they mean it. You know, they're oh, cussing at each other. Well, you know? Oh, yeah. When, when ECW was on that episode of Monday Night Raw, I think that had a big effect, especially on their minds, like, wow. I mean, if this is, you know, the direction things are going, we're way off course. Yeah, they, uh, and, and then, you know, again, I don't know the story of exactly how it goes, but, and money situations arose where, you know, maybe Uncle Vince helped uh, Paul a little bit, and then he was in his pocket and needed to help him some more. And then mm-hmm. things, one thing led to another. I mean, that's not a, a fact. That's just what I heard. Um, yeah. I don't know. But, like, you know, I have, for for, for my experience, um, and as a whole, I don't have too many bad things to say about, you know, my time in ECW because, um I wouldn't have changed a lot of things because uh, you know it was it, it it really was a great time. I mean, I, I think I got fired three or four times <laughs> maybe and, and brought back, you know. And, but that that was that was the way that it was, you know. I mean, um, you know, I was I was by no means you know a saint, you know, because of you know. The thing is, here is another thing. I really want to put this out here too while while we while we have this forum. Um, guys, please, internet, you know, everyone, you quit making up stories about me. I've done enough shit for real to li- that, that, that you don't have to lie. I mean, please. I mean, this, I mean I've, I've lived and died three times, you know, and uh, done everything under the sun, and I'm still here to talk about it. And yet I still read and hear things that are so untrue about me. I'm like, this is, well, why even make this up when you could just tell the truth? Because the truth is more shocking than the story you made up. But we had Absolutely. such a great, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But again, that's that's the internet. That's that's the uh, information superhighway. And I yeah, do I mean, love it, by the way. You know, I love it because it, it's given us this forum to promote the show and have this fun that we're having right now. Yeah, yeah I, mean, we, I mean, I mean, I rumors on the internet, you know, like when I was like, hey, whatever happened to Axel? And, you know, the internet was saying that, you know, you took all your ECW money and opened a sweatshop in Honduras. And, um. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> no, 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 no. What happened was, I took all my ECW money, chartered a boat, and tried to brought all the heroin back from Vietnam, but it didn't work. I got caught. <laughs> See, I was going to be the new Frank Lucas. I was going to be the new American gangster. I was going to have me some Blue Magic. That shit's a brand name. <laughs> That's like Pepsi Cola. I stand behind that shit. They don't know me like they don't know the owner of General Mills. That's a brand name. That's what I was gonna do. But you know, it didn't work out. It did not work out. Somewhere along the line, Big, you know, Biggie said it best. He said, "Oh, you know, man, puff, don't get high on your own supply." And that's you know, next thing you know, I'm broke as a joke, but high as a kite. So you know. That's, <laughs> Again, again, those, and that's another thing that's really hilarious is, you know, people hate to hear when you're doing good, but they love to hear when you're doing bad. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, people don't want to hear me say, hey, man, you know, um, I've been, you know, clean and sober for a while now. I'm having a great time. This is a fun life out here. You know, I've been, been off, you know, actively, you know, the addiction scene for, you know, again, for you know, I've, I've been, you know, for six months or so, I've been clean and sober, doing really good. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear, oh, man, Axel's doing so bad. He looks like death. Uh, and, and But mm-hmm. when, when you tell them, hey, man, I'm feeling good, things are great, I can't wait to get out there and rock and roll and have a good time, you know, they're like, oh, fuck him. He's a he's a this, he's that. But any time yeah. something goes wrong, they're right there to point out, oh, yeah, Axel Rotten OD'd, Axel Rotten was taking 300 pills a day, Axel Rotten was... 
you know, shooting and heroin and snorting coke and fucking three-legged hookers at the fucking travel lodge <laughs> in Philly, which all all of which is true, by the way. Um, but you know, I don't do that stuff anymore. You know, it, it took me, uh, I guess, so oh, how old am I? Thirty-eight. Yeah, th- th- to to grow up and actually realize that uh, there's more out there than you know doing that stupid shit. And I'm having a great time now. And uh, you know, I look forward to seeing everybody this weekend. And you know, shaking all the fans' hands again and just saying thank you to them, you know, because it's it's funny how when when we do these conventions, the fans will come up and they'll vividly remember stuff. They'll say, I remember back in 1997 when you threw so-and-so through that table. I got a piece of that table right here. It's signed by New Jack. It's signed by, can you sign it too? Because now I have everybody that went through the table, and, and this guy, like, kept this thing for 15 years just to make sure he had everybody's name on it that went through the table. I mean, that's dedication. That guy deserves a handshake. He deserves a thank you. He deserves a, you know, that's, that's, because that's what made us, you know, and that was cool. That, that, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to this weekend is just to get back to, you know, learn a little bit about, you know, roots and, and what it's all about, forgetting where you come from. You know, a lot of people talking about, you know, especially, you know, giving back to the community and all this. This is my community. You know, this is, this is me giving back to, the people that gave me a chance to become, you know, someone that people care to hear talk. So that's a good thing. Absolutely. You know, these people, Absolutely. you know, so it's awesome. I mean, I just see that this is just going to take us back into time where we, you know, when we were all together, you know, it's just going to bring back some awesome memories. I mean, I won't be surprised if Vic Grimes will roll up in a wheelchair on his breathing machine, you know, because, you know, I don't oh. know if you guys he had a stroke. But, you know, anyway, but. Uh, <laughs> no, but, he, had, know, he had a double to... heart attack. That, that's even worse. Man, you, yeah, you yeah. know, hey, that's my boy, but, you know, hey, stop eating those double cheeseburgers, you know what I mean? But anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> no mercy. You know, no, no mercy. <laughs> and I mean, you know, you're getting ruthless on him, man. You're getting ruthless. Hey, man, that's love. I love, I love him, man, but taking that big old dive off the top with New Jack ain't good for your heart, you know, hitting those ropes real hard. I think that's, uh, that took his toll. <laughs> yeah, that was, that that was some crazy shit, man. You know, <laughs> crazy stuff. Really. Wow. <laughs> better, better him than me. Better him than me. Yeah, you know. I remember, the, I'm sorry. I no, remember when you did that. Uh, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. You got to tell me. You know, any, I love stories. Talk to me. No, I mean, I remember when we all did the pay-per-view over there in uh, Connecticut. I, I forgot which pay-per-view it was where Vic uh, Grimes fell on New Jack's head off the scaffold. Oh, God, yeah, that was terrible. Originally, it was supposed to be me and New Jack. But, of course, Vic right. Grimes, you know, got, you know, God bless him. He was like, nah, brother, I'll do it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have yeah. no argument with me, brother. You want to take that bump? God bless you. And that and was, you know, that was borderline just, just stupidity, really, to be honest with you. I mean, I mean, I, I, I appreciated what they did, but, I mean, come on, man. It's like that, that. That's just crazy, man, I mean, to, to do that kind of stuff. But, you know, consider the guy who's doing it. I mean, I love New Jack. I mean, I have never had a, you know, everyone talks about what kind of, uh, you know, New Jack, this, New Jack. I have never in the last 20 years had a problem with New Jack a day in my life. I've got along with him, Please. you know, through thick and thin, um, good times and bad. We've always got along. And, you know, some people – you know, say, well, he's this, he's that. I mean, I've seen him do a lot of shit. I've been with him doing a lot of shit. And, yeah. this, <laughs> you know, we was doing some shit. But um, it's like, you know, the, the, it's, it's it's like, you know, the the thing is, you, now is now. You know, what's then is then. And we're just going to try to come down here and have a good time. And and if, and if he walks in the door, I'd, be, I'd love to see him and I'd love, love to have him involved in what we're doing. But if he doesn't, you know, that's, 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 you know, between him and whoever decided not to. And if other guys don't come, that's great too. But we're going to be there. We're going to do our thing on the 27th. And, uh, you know, I know for, for, from my personal standpoint, and uh, and I know Angel agrees because we already discussed it, we're not going to hold back. We're going to give the people what they paid to see because they deserve to see it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I agree. Did you ever think New Jack's going to come back out of retirement? Or do you think it's man, permanent? That's nightmares, man. Don't, don't do that to me. And then, <laughs> Angel claims that nobody ever retires truly. Uh, but do you think? I mean, so far he announced it, and then he hasn't been doing anything. Nobody um, retires from this business. Look, as 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 the great grandfather of professional wrestling, Alpha the Wild Samoan, has once said, "Brother, you were born in this business. 
you will die in this business. You know, <laughs> can you, you, you want, once you're in, you don't get out. I mean, <laughs> look look at Ric Flair. Um, he, oh, yeah. I mean, he just can't, it, like, you know, you ever, you ever, you ever, at the survey. Yeah, you ever hear Chris Rock was talking about the one time, he was talking about, you know, hookers and, and women that are hoes and, you know, go get a job. And his, his line was like, he's like, bitches, put the dick down. Ric Flair cannot put the dick down. He can't walk away <laughs> from the wrestling business. And, I, and, I, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I respect him for it because he loves it that much. And, you know, uh, I, I can't say I could ever walk away that easy because I love it that much. You know what I mean? Uh, there have been times in my life that, you know, I checked out for a year or two because I was doing shit I probably shouldn't have been doing. But, you know, I always came back to where I belong, you know, and that's in, you know, in the ring, you know. It's, that's, Absolutely, that's man. Look at Pula. Look at Abby. That motherfucker's yeah. what, 75, 80? 78. Still going. Yeah. Still going. Yeah. And, like, you know, he's an energizer bunny with titties. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, <laughs> and, and you know, I've had the pleasure of wrestling, Abby, and it's, like, one of the easiest matches in the world, and everyone thinks, oh, my God, that's got to be terrible. Oh, he's looking at this. Man, poke, poke, cut, walk, poke, cut, walk, elbow, one, two, three, it's over, you know. <laughs> There's nothing to it. It, it lasts. It, it oh. might last. It might last three minutes if he takes two steps. I mean, there's nothing to it. It's it's fun. You know, I, don't and, uh, think, I don't know. I've seen him smash up. Uh, God, what's that guy's name from JC? Oh, uh, Rude Boy from uh, uh, ICP's JCW. Oh yes, they, yes, yes, yes. Because we know, because we know, there's a plethora of talent there. <laughs> <clears throat> because you know the insane clown. I'll say this for the record: the insane clown posse as wrestlers. Are horrible rappers, mm-hmm. but as rap, but as rappers, they're disgusting wrestlers. No talent whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, look, and this is coming from a guy with an insane clown posse tattoo on his calf. I mean, the guy, is, you know, God all over him. the I music mean, part. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's like you know, the gimmick is fun. It's great. It's cool, but you know. And they're making money. I'm not saying they're not. I think that you know they're they're smart dudes. I just I mean it's just, you know the I I like one record that or one CD they put out the the Great Malenko. I like that that that, that album was cool. But since yeah. then I haven't and and that song they did it called called Homies that was really good. But one album and one song is not a whole career, man. But those guys are doing it right. They're ma- hey they're making money. I don't, I don't want anyone to think I'm dissing them because I'm not dissing them. I'm actually putting them over. I was just me ribbing them, is what I said earlier. I mean, the guys are smart businessmen. They're doing great business. But, um, you know, I think a lot of people missed the boat with them because back in, like, 97, um, gee, I was actually the first guy, you know, I, I got a hold of them and said, hey, man, I want to I want to put your shit over, you know, and I was wearing the shirts on TV and doing all this stuff. And then everyone else started jumping on the bandwagon, so I jumped off. As soon as I jumped on it, I jumped off because I was not going to be considered, you know, hey, yo, I'm a juggalo. I'm gonna start. No, no, no. I was doing it because it was something different, and I wanted to do something different. And then right. we had everybody and their grandmother, you know, wearing insane clown posse shirts, and I'm a mm-hmm. juggalo, I'm a juggalette, I'm a jug of beans, I'm a jug of shit. <laughs> it didn't matter anymore, you know. So I mean, and and those guys, to their credit, just really wanted to be involved, man. They they came to you know the show in Pittsburgh uh, years ago, and just just wanted to be involved. And you know, I, no one would really give them a chance. You know, Vince gave them. They, but then again, let's let's face the facts. They work for Vince. They work for WCW. They work for TNA. They, so they 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 have just as big a resume as any any one of us. You know, so. Um, you know, they, they were actually in, I remember Sabu and Van Damme, like, throwing chairs at their heads one time on ECW. But um, those guys, you know, you know, they've earned their right to say whatever they want to say. So, you know, I don't know how I got talking about the clowns, but back to the 27th, <laughs> this Saturday. Focus. Let me focus. Angel, DeVito, Balls, Axel. It's going to be a great time. I want everyone to come on out and check it out. Um, you know, I want to do a couple plugs because that's what I do. I want to say I want to shout out to uh, my little rocket queen out there in Houston. Say hey, how you doing? 
I want to say uh, you can check out me on MySpace. It's just uh, MySpace.com slash Axel Rotten. Very easy. Just how it sounds, that's how it's spelled. Don't put an E in there. If you do, you're an idiot. It's A-X-L. There's no E in my name. Um, so <laughs> that's all my plugs. And then we can continue talking. And we can, and we can, yeah, we can put those links up on the uh, the website itself. So for those of you oh, guys that don't feel like remembering shit, you can just click on the click on the little tab. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Because uh, I think uh, with 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 the, with the way the world is today and the the economy being the shit, uh, like I said earlier, you, people really have to think for a minute how they want to spend their money. And you know, I can't say enough about you know how how dedicated. That I am, and I know that Angel is, and I know Francine is for a fact because I spoke to her today about how important this event is, just as a fundraiser, mm. and as and as and as she said to me today, she goes, she said, <laughs> as Francine would say, "Honey, this is just for us, just to get everybody back together." You know, that's yeah. what she said. I mean, that's how genuine it was. It was like, you know, the, we didn't. The, this wasn't put together for like. Who's going over? Who's doing the job? Who's doing? You know, it's like mm-hmm. let's just get everybody back in the same room and see if there's a spark, see if the magic happens, you know. And 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 I think it will. I think it's going to be a good time. Yeah. Hey, now you would uh, you did uh, November Rain and of course the Taipei Death Match version two, which was pretty much. I mean, that was a pretty brutal match in itself too. And I don't know. I mean, if you can really compare the two because you guys there was like total different psychology, you know, throughout each matches, but. What was that like going back in, and did you have any doubts about doing a uh, another type A death match? No, because uh, I, doubts. I didn't have any doubts, of course, because we knew exactly what we were going to do. We were going to do the exact same finish as the first match, and then kick mm. out of it, which is that's exactly what we did. Um, right. We, you know, <laughs> we did the exact same finish, and then Ian kicked out, and then we did something else. Um, but you know, we knew going in that. Um, because of the the billing, I mean, if you look at the DVD and it's almost a, it's the top build or second from the top, we knew that we had to, to be gory and give them something um, that was, you know, it, it was it was equal in violence, but not as equal as impact because it had already been done. And mm. the 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 lessening of the impact has to be blamed on certain individuals in this business who have no idea how to wrestle but just love throwing themselves through glass and love throwing yeah. themselves on barbed wire, love sure. going on like like highspots.com and buying boots and pre-made wrestling pants and work, you know, and saying, hey, I'm a wrestler because I bought a ring and I want you to throw me into barbed wire. And I have $1,000, so I'm going to call, uh, you know, Axel Rotten or New Jack and they're going to put me over. You know, that's how crazy this business has become. That, you know, guys like me back in 1995 could go to Japan, you know, and make, you know, decent money. Now you go over there, you know, you have guys say, uh, oh, no, other American, he throw himself in a bed of nails, $50. You know, and these guys, and, you know, and these guys know who they are, you know, shout out to my juggalo. You know who you are. Um, you go over there and you whore yourself out for nothing, and then guys that, like, helped you, build this thing so you can eat from our table and you can put your paper plate next to my china, you know, so, so you know, you, you're willing to go do that, and they have ruined the business in Japan to the point where, you know, guys, you know, it doesn't matter if, if it's Sabu or if it's me or if it's Balls or if it's Angel or if it's, it's New Jack, you know, because once someone else is going to say, well, if, if I get to pay Axel Rotten two grand, and then, oh, no, I'll do it for 750 And then one of those other guys will do it for 500 And the next guy will do it for 100 By the time they get done, they got some guy, in, some guy in a pair of sweatpants and a Walmart T-shirt with a pair of uh, pro kids on going through a barbed wire board. And someone's going, who is that? I don't know, but he's a crazy American. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, and, and that's what it's come to. That's why I still believe in the fact that quality, quality, is more important than shock value. And yeah, I true. think the idea of seeing uh, myself and balls against the Baldies is more valuable than four indie guys you've never heard of doing a South Valley street fight. It doesn't mean as much. It means more when you put the players in place that make that, make that match mean something. You know, us in that match means something. You grab four guys from – 
Um, you know, take a guy, I throw him out of uh, CZW or Jersey All Pro or low, um, you know, low South Jersey wrestling, and I don't know, whatever the rest of them are. Put them all in the match and do the same thing. It doesn't mean as much. And that's right. not taking away from any of those organizations. I'm just saying, in that building, when you put those, you know, combustible entities together, there should be some sparks. And that's what the people are going to pay to see. And that's right. why we're doing it. You know, it's going to be something that hopefully lives up to its billing. You know, like, as I said on paper, it looks tremendous. And I hope the guys, you know, show up ready to go. And, um, you know, that, that people don't decide to phone it in and, and everyone goes out there with, you know, straps them on tight, you know, and, and you know, does does it one more time. I mean, I know, you know, I got a few more left in me, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, I'm not ready to, like, Mickey work this one, you know. I'm not going to, you know, Randy the Ram myself one out of the business. I'm going to actually just keep going and going, you know, and I'm looking forward to, you know, continuing to go until I'm not having fun anymore. When, and I'll know when that is because, for me, you know, it, it, I get a, a real cool feeling knowing when I'm out there and I still hear the people chanting my name, and I know, you know, it's a good, it's a, it's a great thing when they still, you know, re- respect that and and they they know that, you know, that that's what gets the fire going. You know, when the people stop knowing who I am and they don't care to see me anymore, you know, I'll casually step aside, you know, and maybe maybe get a job at Walmart. But until then, I'm I, I have yet to grow up. Let's look. I am I am I'm every bit of um. Middle age, you know, I'm 38 years old. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but I'm walking around with a big blonde mohawk, a bunch of tattoos and scars, <laughs> and I'm I refuse to be. Guys my age have SUVs, houses, wives, and kids, and and 401ks. You know, I I don't have you know. Well, my wife's a drunk um, that, uh, that 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 reeks of, that reeks of liquor. Um, couldn't stand to be in the same room with her. Um, and, you know, as far as the SUV and, and the 401K, I think if you divide those by two, that equals um, everything I've lost and got back and then lost again and spent on drugs and then had to go to rehab. Uh, yeah, so I'd say I'm doing this because I love it, you know what I mean, not because it's something I have to do. And uh, it, it, it's, it's for me a, a great feeling to know that, you know, Francine actually reached out to me and said she wanted me to be a part of this. And, um, you know, I, I put her in contact with a few people, and I know Angel did the same thing, and, you know, certain other guys did, and it just kept going on and on. And, again, that's how it works, man. If if if, if you want to be a part of something, and this is the kind of show where uh, you shouldn't have to say, well, no one called me. No one, asked, you know, you call. You say, hey, I'm, I'll be a part of this, you know. I, you know, if, if you were ever in ECW and ever, you know, were, were a, something that, that the people are going to remember, you know, you're not cheating, you know, anyone but yourself for not being a part of this because um, the fans are going to see a great time. And if your ego won't allow you to come and donate your time or whatever, take whatever you can get or however it works, I don't know what every other guy's deal is, but I know what mine is, you know, this isn't about ego for me. This is about, you know, uh, and there's a little program I'm in that says check your ego at the door and do some service for other people, you know, and, and, and that's what you – I get what I have by giving it away. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm letting everybody know that there comes a point in time when if you want to if, if you want to give something away, the only way to keep it is to give it away. The only way for me to keep – what I have and my love for this business is to give back to those fans that have given to me for so much. The only way for me to understand that it doesn't matter of, of my ego aside, this is for those people, and this is to raise money for a great cause. Um, if, if, if someone hadn't called me, I would call them. If I looked mm-hmm. on the Internet and saw this card being put together, I would, I would volunteer my time, you know, which I did, of course. And mm-hmm. some guys – wouldn't wouldn't pick up the phone or send out the email or return a call, you know that's their fault because they're cheating themselves out of being a part of something that's going to be really cool. I, and I think you know, me and DeVito. If there's if there's, uh, if there's somebody probably that you got in mind when you're when you're saying all that. And we well, Angel and I, Angel and I talk, but I'm not going to put anybody's name out there. I mean, you know right, right. Right. yeah, Mark, why you want us to put people on blast, man? Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
I mean, I, you, you know, I'm, look, look, I'm not afraid to say shit about anybody, but this is the kind of stuff where, uh, you know, this is this is your own, take your own personal inventory and understand where you're at mentally, and if you're not able to pick up the phone and say, hey, I'd like to help, you got something wrong with you. You know, that's your thing. You know, I've I've given in to the fact that, you know, for for like the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, you know, I've fucked up so bad on and off for, you know, the, that, you know, I, 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 I've got to the point in my life now where I understand that I've, you know, the problem in all these situations was me. I was the guy that kept doing the bad things, and I was the guy that kept getting fucked up, and I, it was always me. So mm -hmm. for, for the, the humility that I have to say I like to help people and I want to give, you know, the fans the chance to see something great again, that's, that's service. That's helping someone else. That's oh. giving back. That's what we're doing here. And for anyone who doesn't understand that, check your fucking ego at the door. Check your ego at your keypad. Check your ego at the cell phone. Pick it up and call it and come on down and be a part of this thing because you're just missing out on a great show. You know, and I, and, and I don't think – I even think at this late date, if some guys were to call and say, hey, can you do something with me? Can you just let me walk out and say hi? I'm sure Francine would say absolutely, you know, and that's and that that you know I I think it's one of those things where you know a couple guys are just missing the boat because their ego won't allow them to reach out and um, you know make make the decision to be a part of this. So, um, you know, and you know, my thing is that you know I I already checked my ego at the door. I'm ready to lace up my boots once again. I got to carry Devito in the match like always, just like in a. <laughs> Mad Max in the Thunderdome with Master Blast and the little midget on the top. But the Baldies are going to be – the Baldies are ready. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, you got to check your ego at the door. You know, this is for a worthy cause, uh, especially hanging out with with the boys. You know, this is just going to be exactly. watch and man get drunk again. Yo. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's like, you know, and – uh and you're talking about carrying DeVito, and I, and everyone knows my tag team partner is the legitimate missing link in humanity. Balls Mahoney is a Neanderthal. Everybody knows this. <laughs> the man is a freak of nature, but that's why I love him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's like, people are like, man, you guys, you know, you guys are nuts. You're crazy. I'm not. I'm no. I'm not nuts. I'm not crazy. I'm just. I'm just insane. Balls is the rest of that shit because he he is <laughs> off the page without a doubt psycho but that's why i love him you know what i mean and uh that's what makes him balls mahoney you know that's what makes him you know fun to to, to tag with that was fun to be with and that's why you know when, when francine has her idea i was like yeah i said whatever you want me to do i don't care i said i prefer to tag with balls or you know uh if you're going to throw a, a tag in there with me and ian or balls you know it's somebody I, I because that's for my part, that's what I've done throughout my career. I've been a tag team wrestler predominantly, you know, either with Ian or with Balls. So I even thought of, you know, put all three of us together. I mean, if, if, if they could have got some other guy to shave their head or one of those other guys to show up, we could have done that. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, it doesn't take much to be bald. I mean, all you got to do is shave your head or, you know, go hang out with uh, Paul Heyman. I mean, it doesn't take much to be bald. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not shooting on you, Paul. I love you. That's <laughs> worth my money. Oh, um, anyway, but you know, I'm saying it would have been kind of cool. Out. That was one of my ideas. Was like, you know, me and Ian and Balls against, you know, all three of those guys. Which I thought that would have really tore the house down, you know. But you know, yeah. it, 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 I don't, I don't know. It who was it yeah. or who, you know, it's, it's not my business, you know. But you know, yeah. when when asked what I would like to do, I said, you know, I'm, you know, I would like to do some kind of tag with, you know, with the FBI, the Baldy, something like that, and that's what we got. So mm -hmm. I'm thoroughly happy. But, and, the funny like thing is that you know, go 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 ahead, Angel, go ahead. I was just saying the funny thing about you know actual balls. You know, when I first started in ECW, I'm not gonna lie, I ain't bullshitting the fans. You know, when I heard I was wrestling the Balls and Axel, I'm like. Fuck, man! I'm gonna get the shit kicked out of me. These guys, <laughs> and they're gonna fucking hurt me and stuff like that. But you know, they are the most class act wrestlers. You know, they're smooth. They take care of you. It could be blood everywhere, fire coming out of the floor, but they take care of you. And then the guys you think like, you know, and I'm not knocking them, but you know, you think of like Chris Chetty and stuff like, man, they're smooth workers. And all of a sudden, you get the shit kicked out of you by these motherfuckers, and you go, man, you expect 
Balls and asses yeah. would be the ones that are fucking hurting you, and, you know, it's just the total opposite. Oh, you know, yeah, from a fan standpoint, especially, you see that kind of, like, carnage, and you're like, oh, well, that's got to, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Thank you. That, by the way, that's a compliment, because it's funny, because to this day, um, I remember the first time we go in Japan, um, people were afraid, the, the guys were afraid of us. Uh, me and Ian went over there together after we did... Uh, you know, all that stuff, and those guys were, like, legitimately scared of us, you know, and it was, just, it was, it was a funny thing, and, no, I'm not, and this was back in, like, 95, now, I'm going to tell you, in 2009, I still wrestle guys that are afraid of me, and wow. this, and this is a natural fact, I had, a, I did a show a couple months ago, the guy was so petrified that I was going to beat him up, he went under the ring and threw up. No. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I bear, I won't even touch you. I said, you know, you won't even know I'm there, you know. And, and he was so psyched out in his head. And I'll tell you why this is, Angel. This and this is the reason why you see this. The guys we are wrestling now used to be sitting in the crowd. That's why yeah. they're afraid of us because they were the guys that were sitting in the crowd when we were doing what we were doing. And so the, that, the next generation of wrestlers that are coming up, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to an indie show and the guy, oh, the guy's afraid, he doesn't want to do this, he's, you know, he heard this. And he, I, was, I was like, where is this guy? And you go over and look at him. But that is kind of true, though. I mean, like, from watching you guys, you know, I'm 27 now, so I'm sure, you know, a lot of those guys you're wrestling now are about that same age. And, right, exactly. I mean, it, like, at that time, you know, the Internet wasn't too huge yet, and, like, not everything was out there. And, yeah, I mean, it's, people, I mean, that's why you guys couldn't get on the pay-per-view for so long, because it was like, no, that, that's for real, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, like that, under, that groundswell of, like, those videotapes and people showing them to their friends, and then, you know, because it, it was before DVD, you'd have, you know, Rob Feinstein would sell videos and make millions of dollars off of us, and we didn't get paid a nickel for them. You know? Absolutely, right. live bait, live bait. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, um, uh, the, the, but but the, those fans that are uh, were at that time fans, you know, that were 17 at the time and 15, are now guys that are trying to wrestle that are 25 and 27, and they and when they hear. Like, oh, you're right, you know, it's going to be you and you and this guy against Axel and New Jet. Oh, man, my wife just called. She went into labor. You know, but, you know, <laughs> you know and it's like, and, and, and it's laughable because, you know, if 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 I ever wanted to hurt you, I would, you know, and if I didn't, I wouldn't. I'm not the mm-hmm. kind of guy that's going to take out a grudge against somebody in the ring because that's just not being – a, that's not a class act. That's not being a worker. That's not because if if Angel's sticking his head out for me to punch him and I and I and I and I break his nose, I'm being a dick because he's giving me his head, knowing I'm going to hit him. And if I throw the punch, that you know that that's me being an asshole. You know that yeah. that and that, it doesn't it doesn't take any it doesn't take any talent to shoot fish in a barrel. Guaranteed, Correct. you're going to catch some. You know, You're so right. any, you know, and there is so, those guys out there, though, on the independent circuit, though, that do pull that kind of bullshit. Well, yeah, <laughs> we talked about one quite extensively, but you know, um, <laughs> that, but but that just happens, and that doesn't mean you know, like, and and that kind of leads into the aura of of what we did because people hear those stories and they're like, oh my god, isn't that the time that he did this? And like, it's like it's like a again a fish story. You know, this guy mm-hmm. caught, a, like, a you know, a six-pound bass. By the time he got home, he was wrestling a 60-pound marlin for three hours, you know, <laughs> sweating his balls off, had to do six costume changes and drink three beers to reel that sucker in. So by the time the story actually gets to these people, you know, it wasn't, you know, you know, Axel and Ian used the barbed wire bat. No, they used the barbed wire bat that had, you know, razor wire and AIDS-infected hypodermic needles on the end of it, and, <laughs> and they had a midget on the pole wrapped in saran wrap with fucking jelly and fucking Vicodin strapped to his tits. You know, that's what, that's what they hear. That's what they hear because they, they don't understand that, you know, the, the, the lure behind it is just that. I mean, go back and watch the matches, and you'll see, even if you watch the, the, the Taipei death match or the barbed wire baseball bat match, 
we're still going for covers. We're trying to win. We're trying to – that's the focus of the match that these guys have lost. Like, let's just go out there and be real gory and to see who can get beat up the most. you got to go for a pin. That's the point. You're trying to win the match. That's why when people ask me about it, you know, hey, you know, I'm a wrestler first. You know, the only reason I got pin, pigeonholed into doing that stuff is I was asked to do it. Paul right. Rodin came to me one day and said, um, how do you feel? about doing something really different. How do you, and that's when we said, well, what do you want? And then we come up with, you know, the barbed wire bat and the whole thing. And that was like, you know, it was actually, I think, an ultimatum. Like, you know, you guys got to go out there and, and tear, tear the house down or one of you is getting fired or something like that. Or, or I forgot who, or I forgot how it went. I mean, Ian probably knows the story a little better than me. Uh, but uh, it was something along those lines. And, and that's why... We that with that spark under our ass that was like if if you go out there and you put on a match that's why you know an angel knows because he was there toward the end and and for a, for a couple of years our spot was always where right before intermission every time that's where we were that was that was known if you're if you're getting balls and axle against the Dudleys against the Baldies against any of the E's it's going on right before intermission. Because that's when it happens. Because they need a, they got to mop up, they got to clean up, they got to put people back together, they got to staple the fans together. Because yeah. that's <laughs> that, that, that's how I we go. Guys with mops coming out a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, oh, man, and, and the fucking funny thing is the fucking when when the the guys would come out with the mops and the brooms, the fans would lay into them, sweep it up, oh, yeah. asshole, sweep it up. Sleep it up, <laughs> asshole. I mean, and these guys, these poor guys are just trying to, to do their job so they can do the next match. And the fans in Philly are just fucking riding them, telling them oh, they're yeah. clean. You know, it, and that's the stuff that makes me laugh. It's, it's like, like those fans were just like, they would pick out any, like you could be in the crowd and they'd start a chant about you, you know. I, I the, the, the first time I heard someone chanting "She's a crack whore" and everyone else sort of chanting along with them, that was like like just like music to my ears. To hear like a whole building full of people calling a girl a crack whore, and I think it was Francine, I think, or it might have been Chastity, I don't know. But like the the, the funny thing is just like to sit there and listen to like fourteen hundred people yelling at someone and clapping in unison. She's a crack whore, that, 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 she's a crack whore. I mean, that's, that's, that's entertainment, my friends. And, yeah. oh, yeah. and, and, and I'll tell you what, if, if nothing else, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell the show for you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like, uh, Billy Mays here for OxyClean. <laughs> all right, all right. This, is, this is Axel Rotten here for the show in Philly. If nothing else, if nothing else, this is your chance to say, that you were in the crowd that chanted, she's a crack whore. So come on out on the 27th and, and do yourself a favor, and at least at some point in the show, somebody please start chanting, she's a crack whore, da, 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 for me, please. Because, I mean, I, I, th- I think it's every wrestling fan's right to, at, at, some, at some point, chant, she's a crack whore at a girl. I think I that's... that's they, they got to pick that, somebody in the crowd, though, because it, well, Francine's pregnant, and you can't really hit her up with that, unless you want the baby here and that, like, coming out. No, going, that's you know, even like, <laughs> look, 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 that's even sicker. And that, that, that's the thing about Philly is, is the, the fact is, if you chant she's a crack whore and a pregnant whore, girl, you're a real dick. You know? <laughs> yeah, so, so, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't condone that. But, I mean, there's a couple other frauds on there that can be crack whores. I mean, I don't know. I, look, hey, look, I know that um, that uh, I think Chastity's on the show. She can be the crack whore. Um, I'm not. Look, I'm not saying she is because I know she's not. I'm just saying one of the girls need to be called a crack whore because that's a Philadelphia tradition. Oh, you know? yeah, no, you know that chance coming before the end of the night. That's for sure. Exactly, <laughs> and, and and there's a couple, and, and there's a couple more that I enjoyed too. Um, oh Christ! Hey, you know, those, your kids was always great as far as being a yeah. uh, a member of the audience. <laughs> of course, of course. And, and I used to like when the fans would just inter- entertain themselves. This is one of the funniest moments. I don't know uh, if you guys even remember. Well, you may have never seen it. The building turned on itself. One side of the fans started chanting, "That side sucks." You know, saying, "No, that side." They were, they were, they were, they were 
really, they didn't need us or the ring. It was just like <laughs> one night. One, I don't remember when this was, and I don't even remember why it was, but something happened where somebody did a really cool spot, and the crowd on the one side of the building was like, eh, and then the fucking ble- bleacher bum starts in. That side sucks. Da, 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 da. That side and then, and then he said, like, no, you suck. Da, 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 da. It was a, you know, and, and it was like, you know, the, the fans, at this point, whoever was in the ring could have just sat down, grabbed the chair, and just waited for them to finish, and then continued. Because at that point, the match was so inconsequential. The fans were having such a good time. And that's what's missing. That's what's missing. And, and, and that's what I'm selling right now. Are you, are you smelling what the rotten's cooking? All I'm trying to do is tell you to come on out on the 27th and have that good time with us, man. Be be a part of chanting she's a crack whore. Be a part of having someone bleed all over your clothes, and then you have to go to the clinic and under, find out if you have hep C and AIDS. <laughs> and, you know, enjoy the thumbtacks and the barbed wire and the beautiful girls and the wrestlers that gained a few pounds, you know, and some that lost hair and some that, you know, Let's just have fun. This is this is this is for the sake of raising money for cancer and having a great time uh, for the fans and for everyone involved. And I think you know, as I said, uh, if if I were still, I think if if, if I weren't even going to wrestle in the show, I would still show up out of respect and support for the cause. And and I'm sure, like I said, Francine and, and the people that are, that are putting this thing together would have enough wherewithal to say, just go out and say hi. Just go out and just, hit the, just jump in the ring and say, hey, I just want to let everyone know I'm here, and uh, thanks for coming. You know, that, that, if I couldn't, if, if I got hurt to the point where I couldn't wrestle, that's what I would have done. I would still come up to the show and, and at least on that. And that's what I think this is all about. It's just all about, you know, the guys getting back together and the fans getting a chance. And, 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 and those that didn't get a chance to see it back in the early 90s to the, um, you know, up to about 2000, you know, I, I got to imagine this is kind of like almost like a kiss concert where, it's like, kids, parents bring their kids. You know, this is what I like, you know. This is, you know, because it, it's still the greatest show on earth. You know, there's still the bombs and all that stuff. And I got to imagine this is like, you know, the kiss concert of professional wrestling. Like, like, Absolutely. You know, you're, you're, trust you're, him. He's a doctor. Yeah, you do. You, yeah, trust Gene. He's a doctor. I'm a doctor. I know these things. But this, and I, I, I equate to that, though, because I'm, I'm being, I was a big KISS fan. I go to a show, and I'll see people with their kids, you know, saying, you know, you just don't understand. I mean, I don't know what a drowning pool is. I've never had a stained shirt. I'm, you know, I'm not a theory of a dead. And these, the, this is a, I heard a guy tell his kid, he goes, look, I don't know what all that you're listening to, with, but wait till this is over, and then you tell me something. And then at the end of the show, goes, well, that was the most outrageous thing. That was the greatest rock show I've ever seen in my life. That's what they're seeing on the 27th is, you know, i got to imagine a lot of people are going to bring some friends that they had never seen it live and only heard about it and only didn't get a chance oh, yeah. to see it. You know, and that's, and that's why I think, again, we have to live up to that reputation because, you know, there, there are going to be some people there that their version of ECW comes on sci-fi. So we're going to yeah. give them... Uh, uh, like not a, not even a reality check. It's like going to be like a kick to the teeth when they see, whoa, this is what this is really what it was. This is this is what you know. This is and the immortal words is nature boy. This is what's causing all this. Woo! This is what <laughs> this is it. This is what's causing all this. This is why there is you know a big you know you know ECW sci-fi show. Because right. of guys like Angel and myself, and and I and I won't take away Tommy Dreamer's credit. I mean, for him to be ECW champion right now is great. I just think they're missing the boat on, you know, wouldn't it be cool as shit? And I'm just not, I'm not lobbying for a job, but wouldn't it be cool as shit if like Tommy's out there talking about he's going to do this, and I just whacked him in the head with a chair, you know, out of nowhere, like oh my god, it's you know, or or, yeah. or you know, or someone else hits like Sandman hits the ring and canes the shit out of him. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, hello, um, talent relations and creative committee and world wrestling <laughs> entertainment. Da, 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 this just in: if you want to like get a spike in the ratings, bring back the guys that invented the shit you're trying to recreate. And now yeah. back to your regular scheduled program. Wow, amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Well, I, I don't think anybody can sell the show coming up this Saturday better than you just sold it. I, I, I'm excited as hell to be coming down there and. 
uh, I was never in Philadelphia for a show, so this is going to be a lot of fun for me, you know, and, and anybody else is coming down there. Well, yeah, you know, like, like, my, like, like my man, uh, you know, R. Kelly said, you know, because, you know, after the party is the after party. Then after the party is the hotel lobby. And I mean, this, this, the show is the beginning of the fun. You're right. It's, it, yeah. The, it, this is the Mardi Gras of professional wrestling. It, it starts at 12 noon, and it ends sometime around Wednesday. So when you get, to, when you get there, you know, have a good time. I mean, let yourself enjoy it because that's what it's all about, you know having a good time and raising some money for a good cause. You know, South Philly, 27th, the arena, corner Swanson and Rittner. What's the, what's the, the, the arena dot biz? That's how you get tickets. Is that, is that, is that the, what, one of their little websites? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah look, man, I, look, man, I'm plugging away cause I want, I want people to be there. You know, I'm just like, that, that's why we're here. I mean, I'm, I'm a Absolutely. useless, I'm a, I'm a useless shill at this point. I'm just trying to sell tickets. No, the fact remains, <laughs> the fact remains, Look, you know, look, and I'm say, I'm telling you, listen, I'm not, you know, I'm not getting anything out of this other than the satisfaction of doing it, and um, and 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 it comes from the heart when I say, um, you know, Francine put this show together out of love for family members that she lost, you know, to the terrible disease of cancer, and I can relate to that as I said, having my grandmother pass away from cancer, um, and 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 out of her love. I mean, and think about it. It took kind of like a cool thought for her to be sitting around one day and go, you know, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we just got everybody back together and see what happened? You know, that's kind of yeah. cool, you know. And then, and then just to do that and go, well, you know, yeah, we could do that and we could, you know, run a big show and everyone could get, you know, make some money and, and have a good time. Or we could actually be really good human beings being nice to one another and give money to those less fortunate, you know, because as much as I have thought of all the trauma and the and the bad luck and all the troubles and all the things that I've done to myself, I'm still here to say it. You know, I'm mm-hmm. still alive and well and healthy and able to do what I love to do. And to, to just be taken aback for a moment and go get, get real serious. I mean, to sit there and think about the people that when a doctor walks into the room and says, you know, well, you know, your your, your three-year-old has you know, a tumor on his stomach, um, and to remove that, that's going to cost $50,000. Do you have insurance? And when those people say, well, no, I don't, well, okay, well, if you pay like 25000 now, we'll, we'll go ahead and not. People don't have that kind of money, you know what I mean? Right. And to make a decision on whether or not you're going to sell your house to let your kids survive, people shouldn't have to make those decisions, you know, and that's why a, a charity like, you know, the American Cancer Society is, is, is phenomenal because, they're, they go and they research and they help people. They help, you know, give people a second chance at life and, and with drug research. I'm not talking the kind of drug research I did in the middle 90s. I'm talking about real drug research to help people with an incurable disease, you know. And, and, and I know that, that without question, you know, the, that I feel strongly about it. I know Francine does and I know other guys I've talked to, you know, are 100% in to do this thing. And I hope the fans turn out in droves in support of it because I can't think of a better cause to to lend my time to to raise money uh, for 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 some people less fortunate or or even more fortunate that, that may not even have the ability to to understand that there's this group of you know I used to call us a, a circus of traveling freaks because that's what we were I mean you know. When, when, when the ECW locker room showed up in an airport and we were all on the same flight, it looked like, you know, like Tracy Smothers used to say, he's like, man, man, let me tell you, man, wrestling balls and axles is like going to Afghanistan, man. Like, it's like bombs going off over here. People hit me with this. I got people throwing the tables. <laughs> so I don't know. I can't, I can't handle it, man. Hey, 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 man, so what's your deal? What's your deal? You know, you know, he, he, he's like, you know, he's like, but that, that, that's what I'm looking forward to. But he was joking because he knows that, you know, whenever we got in there, you didn't have to say it. You just knew what to do, and mm-hmm. and that's the great that's the great thing about the crew of guys that we had, and I just can't wait to get back and 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 get back in that field because the the whole thing for the fans, it's going to be like like I said, almost an all day event. If you got like the the, the premium passes or whatever, you come in. You get there's going to be Q and A sessions with the guys. You know, you're going to get this. 
yeah, yeah, <laughs> some some grubbage. Um, you get to be able to be able to talk to us and ask questions and 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 get the real answers from from us. You know, you don't have to read it on you know somebody's blog or somebody's website or something. You can actually understand, you know, right from the guy's mouth. You know what 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 happened? You want to know? There you go. So I think it's a great opportunity for everybody, and as long as everybody comes out and has a great time, uh, I think it'll be a success. And I think that. Uh, you know, I know, and like I said, for us, I'll repeat it again, I know we're not going to phone it in. We're going to go out there and give the people everything as if it were, you know, the 1998, you know, Wrestlepalooza or whatever, November to Remember, it doesn't matter, whatever. Was 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 it was it us in November to Remember 98 where New Jack come off the basketball net? I can't yep. remember, Angel. Was that, was that in Buffalo? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, so, I, mean, I remember that. Yeah, so... I mean, you know, the, if you, that, and, and I, I know for sure that match is online because I used to have it on my website. So, I mean, that's the kind, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get any less than that. You probably get a little more because um, I know I've become, I've I've invented a lot of new ways to stick things in people. You know, I mean, <laughs> whoa, 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 let me rephrase that. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> I have. Um, came up with more creative ways to inflict pain on people, you know. The first way I said that could be misconstrued as something that is totally unacceptable and I will not condone. But, hey, ladies, you know the number. <laughs> Guys, listen, I, I got I to gotta run because uh, I got to get up early in the morning. Like I said, I had a whole day of traveling today, um, just getting back from Miami. Uh, can I tell this story before I go? Because you guys are going to love this. This yeah. is a shoot, too. This is a complete shoot. I woke up this morning at 2.45 for a 6.30 flight, okay? okay. Uh, for some reason, they woke me up at, at 2.45. Um, I get dressed. I go down. I had to you know, go to the treatment center I was at you know, taking care of myself. I had to sign out. They had a shuttle for me to take me to the airport. They take me to the airport now. The airport is uh, – they, they picked me up at 3.45. I said, oh, okay, shit, the airport must be a, a pretty far away. Considering I have a 6:30 flight, I get in the shuttle. The guy takes me right to the airport. I'm at the airport at 4 a.m. So now oh I'm up God. at 2:40. Now U.S. Air desk doesn't open until 5:30 a.m. So I'm standing around doing nothing for an hour and a half. You know, and, and and who? Let me do some science on now. Who are these people that are in the airport at 4 in the morning? Why are they in line? Why are they in line? The line doesn't open until 5:30. You're in line at 4 a.m. Who are these people? I go to the airport. There's a line already. I'm, th- wow. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, so I, I'll play along. I'll, 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 I'll play happy traveler. So I sit back and I just let the line continue to swell. So I get in line, go up to the counter, get my ticket. Oh, Mr. Knight, and this is going to be simple. You're just going to Baltimore. Um, he's one stop in Charlotte. Uh, right on through. Boom, you know, no problem. Ah, oh, great, fantastic. No, no plane change, no nothing. Bags checked, you know, I'm gone. So we, the flight leaves, uh, U.S. Air, quality airline, top notch. We left about 20 minutes late um, and then got to Charlotte. Then when we got to Charlotte, they come over to the intercuffing. Inter- inter- uh, attention all uh, passengers heading to Baltimore. There's been a slight change. You're going to have to deplane this aircraft and check the monitors for the next flight to Baltimore. So I'm like, what? I mean, well, so I was like, okay, I'll play along. I get get off the plane, look at the monitor. So it says continuance of flight 1434 at gate J10. Well, it's not that far, right down the way. Get down to J10. Now the flight I was almost 1434. So now they have completely added a new flight 1434. Can't the other one has stopped. So now I'm thinking to myself, all right, this is going to be fun. So I get get on this flight. And, you know, the great high-quality service the U.S. Air is, you know, they left about 25 minutes late. Um, and we get, into, we get into Baltimore, and this is even when it gets really good. You guys are going to love this. I get off the plane. I'm walking up the, uh, the rampway. I get to the, the top of security where security – well, well, let me retrace. At Miami Airport, they treated me like I was Tony Montana. They checked everything of me, man. They, they looked at me and they said, look at this. I mean, they put me in a machine that swirled around me. I, I, I must look like that was a fuzz 
that they had to, and then they patted me down twice, not once, but twice. Wow. Anyway, back, let me get back to the end of the story. I come through the security checkpoint at Baltimore, and there's a limo driver picking me up, and he has my, the, <laughs> the, the, the placard that he's holding up. You know how you, you see the guys holding up the names of the signs that people are picking up, like it's like Joe Smith, Bill Jones. Uh, yeah. Well, this guy, in his brilliance, and his company's brilliant, thought that he was picking up not my, my shoot name, not Axel Rotten, Brian Knighton. He thought he was picking up Brian McKnight, the great R&B singer. So, this guy, <laughs> so now I, I am sitting there going, dude, that's me. He's like, yeah, right, pal. You know, I'm arguing with the limo driver. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I said, no, I said, I'm telling you, man, you just have that spelt wrong. So they had it spelled Brian McKnighton. And I said, the guy, I said, bro, I'm telling you, that's me. And he looked at me and he kept saying, come on, man, come on, man. I ain't, playing. I ain't trying to hear that. I'm like, man. <laughs> so I whip out my itinerary and I show it to him. And he looked at his little clipboard and he goes, well, damn, that is you. I said, I've just been telling you that for the last 10 minutes. You know, so then he's apologizing all over himself because he's thinking, oh, I ain't getting no tip now. I just insulted this guy, you know. You know, so. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, look, Rodney, it's okay. Don't worry about it. No problem, man. You know, my day started at 2.45 a.m. It couldn't get any worse at this point until we get to baggage claim. Well, lo and behold, because of that airplane shift, my bag was lost. Imagine oh, that. So this is my day so far, guys. This is what I've done all day. This, this is all this before 5 a.m. I'm like the goddamn army. I do more before 9 a.m. than most people do all fucking day. I mean, it was like it was like one of the greatest, funniest. And, and I'm sitting there um, on my cell phone in the limo calling the people uh, that uh, paid for it, you know, thanking them for taking care of, uh, you know, all the expenses and everything. And, and I said, hmm. the, the final thing was I said, now, now, when is Ashton Kutcher going to jump out and tell me that I've been punked? Because this has absolutely <laughs> been the most ridiculous day in my life. It started at 2.45 a.m., and it was all said and done. I finally got my luggage at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And finally, finally, um, the day has come to an end, and, you know, the evening was the easiest part. You know, uh, unfortunately, I don't know, we didn't probably talk too much about Raw because uh, I didn't see it, and I, as I, as I do when I come on a talk show, I just dominate the conversation and just, oh, that's just okay. talk and, like and a motherfucker. You didn't, didn't miss much with Raw anyway. <laughs> you know, what, what I love is... The break, they, there, were, there were no breaks for the fans either, trust me. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I saw the, 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 the thing where they do the, hey, let's lay on the floor for two minutes anyway and take a rest. They still did that. They just didn't t- go to a commercial when they usually do that. Um, <laughs> that's that's what I love about wrestling fans. Yo, that shit that shit's fake, yo, ain't it? No. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. See, I told my brother. I told him, see, it ain't fake. And then and then then they'll sit there and watch Raw and go, how come every time Triple H and Randy Orton are laying on the floor, they know to go to a commercial. <laughs> and how come every time they come back from that commercial, it's just when they're getting back up? Man, these guys, these, whoever's, whoever's directing that show knows how people's bodies work. He knows you. Triple H is on the Triple H is on the floor. Wait, wait. Oh my God, it's Randy Orton's on the floor. Um, right now, would be a perfect time to take an exact two-minute break. Let's see what happens. Because I think they've just been hurt just enough that in two minutes they'll be coming right to their feet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, guys, it is what it is. I'm going to end on that note. I'm going to say thanks to both of you, you know, you guys, uh, for, for having me on here. Angel, I'll be seeing you on Saturday. My friend, Rob Mouth in the corner from Cleveland, I'll be seeing you on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you two up here in Cleveland. You know, yeah, well, come to Philly, my friend. We're going to introduce you to a whole new world. You all come to the show, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'll be there. All right. Well, you'll be there. So, uh, so, when I wrap, so, yeah, so, Angel, Angel, so when I wrap him in barbed wire and throw him at you, are you going to catch him? That's the question. <laughs> nah, no, I'm going to move. <laughs> let, let DeVito take the ball. Let DeVito take the ball. Anyway, I'm saying, guys, <laughs> listen, thanks for having me on. I, it, was, it was a pleasure. The show's a class act. I had a great time. And uh, any time you ever want me to come back on here again, just reach out. You make the phone call. I'll be more than happy to come on because – 
you know, I spent a lot of time plugging one particular show, but, uh, you know, as you guys both know, I got plenty of stories to tell and all the time in the world to do it, and I don't mind telling the truth. People hate, here's a, see, I was going to finish, but now I just remembered something else. <laughs> Paul Heyman actually told Rob Feinstein, don't do a shoot interview tape with Axel. He's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, because you know what? You know what's dangerous about Axel? He tells the truth. Oh, it's oh. dangerous. <laughs> Man, there's nothing more dangerous to a habitual liar than someone that tells the truth. Well, yeah, but, good uh, right there, man. But, uh, guys, guys, <laughs> I want to say, I want to say, Angel, thanks, bro. Thanks, you guys, for having me on here. It was a oh, great thanks time. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. Oh, and like I said, so much, brother, brother, my pleasure. Uh, balls and Axel against the Baldies. The rest of the card, I'm sure, you know, check out the little the little video you guys put together. It looks great, too. I mean, I want, that was your guys' thing to put that together, right? To wrestle out loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Tremendous yeah, stuff, that. man. Great, great stuff. I mean, I, I actually have it up on my MySpace page, shameless plug, myspace.com slash Axel Rodden. Um, there you go. You can go check it out. Uh, the video's up on there, too, because I thought it was a great piece of work. Um, I'm the, I've been on here for, I don't know what, how, what time is it? It's it's been probably about an hour and a half. It's, it's yeah, I've had a good, this, <laughs> see, Angel, guys, this is what I know I'm having fun because usually when I do these things, it's like 15 minutes and I'm you know I'm, I'm spent. But I've had such a good time on here with you guys that uh, you know I'm really now that Monday's over, I'm really starting to get the countdown on to Saturday and having a good time because uh, me personally. I live in Baltimore, so it's only going to take me like an hour, hour and a half to get to Philly. And uh like to do that. Yeah, and it just be just right up the right up the street, you know, and Francine today was on the phone talking on the phone saying, you know, okay honey, I'll see you this it was like just like it was nineteen ninety five all over again. I'll see you this weekend, you know, have a great time, you know. And I was thinking like, oh, wow man, if 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 I could be just Jim Croce and put time in a bottle, man, it would be one of those things that you know, this this is gonna be a great, great night for everybody. So uh Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm going to get out of here. i got to go to bed because I have a very early day tomorrow. And today, as you know, being being world-famous R&B singer Brian McKnight, my, my day, my day every day does this. Start back at one. So i got to go tomorrow morning and start back at one. Guys, thank you. Have a great time. I'll see you all. I'll see everybody in Philly on Saturday. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. All right, all right bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was one of the best mic guys in the business, Axel Rotten. We appreciate him coming up on coming on WrestleOutloud.com. dot com. Um, we class went, act we went gentleman. overtime today, man. We went overtime. We're at uh, twelve forty one, eleven minutes past. Uh, right now, the people who are listening to this are listening to the uh, the broadcast on the website. Absolutely, it was a good interview. Oh, great. Great time. Great guy. And uh, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool stories, and can't wait to have him back on. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, how many minutes do we have left? Uh, we're we're overtime, man. We're we're uh, we're on our podcast time right now. All right. Well, hey, I guess it's time to cut the show off because it's time for the kingpin to get his ease because he has to wake up 3 fucking 30 in the morning and while Mark 13 is sleeping in his fucking bed. So why don't you yeah. cut the show off, motherfucker, and don't waste my time. You best with my beauty sleep. Ah, you fuck. All right, well, we'll uh, we'll be doing uh, a lot of cool stuff at the website coming up this weekend. You know that. Uh, me and uh, the Kingpin might be scheduling a little something-something for uh, before the show, so be on the lookout for that, man. It's WrestleOutLoud.com. It's the Kingpin and 13 show, bitches. And, and bitches, we are the voice of the people. You derbs straight. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Be that I need to be-
succeed and feed. Now believe us, the heat that breathes what you need. I'ma get inside of you, lie to you, dying to fly and by night at you. I'm getting high and I'll try to inside a fight at you. Time to set it straight, the great hate to date ya. Fuck you! Yeah. 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 Yeah